America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. Hi, I'm Angela Peabody of Global Woman Peace Foundation, and I listen to America's Meditating Radio Show. The Azar Foundation for Children of the World is an organization aimed to support women and children in need across the globe. We believe in empowering lives, strengthening minds, and providing programs that enrich health and education. The Azar Foundation was founded in 2003 and has been serving the world ever since. Visit us at our website at www.azarforchildren.org. That's www.azar, the number four, children.org to find out more information about our endeavors and join our mailing list. Remember, the smile and the cry of a child doesn't have any language. The Azar Foundation. Do you like to meditate? Have you tried to meditate? Have you struggled with meditation? Why don't you visit one of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center? Visit brahmakumaris.org. Hello, everyone. This is Sister Jenna from the America Meditating Radio, and I'm excited to introduce to you Meditate the Vote. It's going to be a national campaign, and what we're asking for all of you to join us with is to raise the bar of conversation. Try to see in what way we can change our interpretation about who we are, what we are, and perhaps the direction in which we want this country to go in. Regardless of whoever becomes the next president in 2017, we are still responsible for the way that we want to move our lives. So could you join me and an alliance of friends around the country to meditate the vote? Go to americameditating.org, press on Events, Meditate the Vote, and you'll be able to get a whole bunch of information. So join us, because I, Sister Jenna, meditate the vote. Hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and we're broadcasting from the beautiful Meditation Museum in the nation's capital. And the African American Museum will be opening up soon in September. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to seeing how that's going to look on the inside. And today we got a wonderful message and tweet from lots of our friends. I want to give a shout out to Joshua Dubois, Devon Franklin, Gabby Bernstein, our sweet and beloved Ingrid Vanderveld, India Ari, and so many of our friends who made the 100th list of Super Soul Sundays yesterday today with Oprah. It was really nice also to see Prince E there. He was there and Jesse Williams was there. And just to, you know, I can only imagine what they're going to be coming up with and and what great stuff is going to be emerging from that. It's so, it's such a great time to be alive. It's such a great time to be able to improve our lives and and ensure that improvement of our lives with others as we are moving towards our own improvement. And I think so many of us are reaching that point where we have crossed our T's and dotted our I's and we have put as much as we can in what everyone told us that we should do and be and we just didn't feel the success from that. Now, as recalling a, a message I came across from our beautiful 100 plus Daddy Janky from the Brahma Kumaris, who, by the way, just left the hospital yesterday and they sent a picture to me from the UK. She was sparkling. That woman is like ageless. She looked like 60, okay? She looked like 60 and had no Botox, but she's just found a place that she lives from within her being. And inside of that place, she has been able to tap source. And so she's fine. She dances. If you go into her Facebook, Daddy Janky, you'll see her at parting to ABBA with a song called Dancing Queen. Remember that one? And she's just found that place. And this is my wish for all of us, that we find that place, that place that we can sit inside of ourselves that cannot be disturbed by the consistent changes that we encounter in our day-to-day lives. And I know that all of those scenes and relationships and situations that emerge in front of us are signals and are opportunities to help us 
to learn more about ourselves so we can be more improved. Improved to me is when you can smile at someone who's not smiling at you. Improved can mean when someone who's very jealous of you, you can still be humble and understand that they're in a painful place and still give them that respect and love. To be improved means that despite the inappropriateness of someone's behavior or character, I can still be caring and kind. You're listening to America Meditating Radio. Stay tuned. We're about to have David Rickland on, and David's going to be talking. Before I get David on the air, I'd like us to do what we do best here, and that is to meditate, to reflect, to empower, to strengthen who we are and why we breathe and the importance of our existence in this planet. We don't try to be better people, and we keep blaming everyone else for why our lives are not good. It's going to be a rough journey. So my invitation is take a deep breath, breathe in, and just allow everything that is good and true and right about you to come to the surface so that you can remember who you are and why you're here. Take a deep breath, relax, and let's let it go. Om Shanti. The time that we choose to be aware doesn't necessarily require me to just sit and meditate. But even while I walk and move around, I can be in a meditative awareness, which is awareness of the soul the original, eternal, imperishable being of light. For a little while, I'd like to invite you to be present, to be here, and to be now. Allow your mind to settle in the moment, to relax. This meditation is about awareness. It's about becoming aware of your original and eternal self. It's about connecting to your truth. Let go of your name. And observe yourself feeling nameless. Let go of your gender to discontinue thinking you're a man or a woman. Let it go and observe how you would feel walking around without a gender. Let go of the role that you play and let go of the titles that you own. Observe how you're feeling as you are gradually letting go. Let go of your religion and put it aside just for now. And let go of your nationality and even the language that you're accustomed to. Imagine you have no name, gender, role, title, religion, nationality, or even a language. Ask yourself. How do you feel at this moment?
and in this feeling, who would think of you and who would you think of? The Supreme Soul would think of you and you, the liberated soul, would think of the Supreme. In this state of absolute freedom, I am truly who I am. A free, peaceful, pure, immortal, and eternal soul. Allow yourself to just be absorbed in this awareness. for the world for us to reconnect to our higher self and to feel a deeper part of our existence which I think is what the letting go meditation does for my off the grid into the heart meditation CD well today we will be speaking with David Ricklin about the Ten Commandments of Self-Improvement David is the founder of selfgrowth.com one of the top ranked websites for self-improvement and personal growth on the internet getting over 1 million visitors a month. His company also publishes two email newsletters going out to over 300,000 weekly subscribers. David's first book, Self-Improvement, the top 101 experts who help us improve our lives, has been praised by leading industry experts as the Encyclopedia of Self-Improvement, and that book's success motivated him to continue publishing books which seek to improve the lives of many others. To date, David has authored eight books, and today we're happy to have him on America Meditating Radio. Hi, David. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm glad to have you. I'm glad that you're doing so much good work in making people better. I think we're definitely in a very important time that we're being called to definitely raise the bar of awareness on the planet. So I want to know more about you. How did you actually start getting into the self-improvement business? Was it something that David was just born with, or did a life event occur that just shifted your whole level of consciousness and said, hey, what am I doing? It's probably a combination of the two, and I'll Mm -hmm. take you quickly back with this story. I started out of college working in corporate America, big corporate America, Hewlett Packard, one of the top companies in the world. And at that point, I figured my education was done, I'm done learning, and it's just time to do. And one of the interesting things about Eula Packard is they sent you to a lot of training courses. And one of the first ones that they sent me to was a Dale Carnegie training course, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I fell in love with this concept when I took the course that you can continue to learn and to grow. And I understood there was a a light that went off. And I, I now understood that your life's mission is really to continue to grow and to learn and become a better person. And I decided that one day, one way or another, I, I wanted to be in that business, in that industry. Mm-hmm. And fast forward a few years to the mid-90s, and my girlfriend and I bought a domain name together, selfgrowth.com, because we both had an interest in self-improvement and personal growth and stress relief, anxiety, all those kind of things. Uh, we bought the domain name. We decided to start posting information on it. And it got popular, and later on we got married, I launched the business, we had kids, we did all the other stuff. But uh, um, and about 12, 14 years ago, I went full-time with this, and I've been on this mission with selfgrowth.com and self-improvement to, to really get the word out on, on the wide variety of resources that are available to people to improve their lives. It's so fascinating how the Internet has become a tool to connect to individuals who aren't necessarily maybe on in real time process they wouldn't really connect and your company is now maintaining multiple websites on self improvement natural health 
marketing, sales. Why don't you share with our listeners a little bit about them and what they actually do? Sure. I'll start with selfgrowth.com. That's our primary website. And the the focus of that was really to become this massive resource, kind of a, a Google slash Amazon dot com for self improvement and personal growth. And we currently have over three hundred thousand articles on everything from stress management to meditation to anxiety to goal setting to public speaking to building a business. And and the goal with it was to be a free resource. And we've worked with roughly thirty thousand experts who've not only created profiles on selfgrowth.com, but they provide content and articles and videos. And and the goal is, and I I invite all your listeners to take a look at it, is to come and look for information that's going to help each one of you improve your lives. And it's really this massive resource. In addition to that, we launched a, a website called Power Summaries that focuses on information about kind of the top best selling books in the self improvement and personal growth industry. And we also do self growth marketing and we do a number of things, but really goes back self growth dot com is kind of the, the starting point. We look at it as the starting point for self improvement. Beautiful, beautiful, amazing. And it is estimated that Americans are now spending over eleven billion a year on self improvement books, CDs, seminars, coaching. Why is that? What's going on with us and are we getting better as a nation? The way I see it I think we're all born with a shared mission. And we talk Mm -hmm. about shared life purpose and what's our life purpose. And I think we all have a shared mission or shared life purpose from the time we're born. And that is really to grow and to become what I describe as the best version of ourselves. And that's what our continued mission is for our whole life. And it can take many, many directions in many, many forms. And because of that, I think people are in a constant state of looking for ways to do that. What are the best ways for me to improve my life? What are the best ways for me to improve my relationships or improve my health or improve my finances or to have greater inner peace or or to more effectively use meditation? And because of that, people are are seeking out, and there's been an industry that's developed around this, of self-improvement books and coaching. But I consider it much, much larger than this $11 billion because People are using a wide variety of tools. Some people might go to a psychologist or a social worker or a marriage counselor. There's a huge weight loss industry. You know, people also seek religion and spirituality. It's hundreds of billions of dollars. And, and the reason being is that we're all in this together. Our goal, as I mentioned, is a, a shared mission of becoming better, the best versions of ourselves. And I think that should be our vision as a community, a worldwide community ourselves to become the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what is that? What is the best version of ourselves? Why I'm asking is, I was just remembering in my teens, for me, my best version was, you know, Miss Thing, you know. And, and, you know, I had to really look away, have a certain amount of money, carry the right partner next to my arm. My hair had to always look amazing, like Fire Fawcett. Sure. And so, and at that time, I thought that was the best version of myself. So my awakening happened in my 20s, and that whole image just went like, bang, done. That is not your best version. And then after that experience happened, my best version became a more interior sense of beauty, a more interior look. What were my thoughts like? How was I feeling about others that were in my presence or even people who didn't treat me very well? Was I able to be the best part of me even when that was happening? So when you talk about the best version of ourselves, what does that actually mean and what does it look like in your eyes? My belief is that it's our personal responsibility to identify and determine what that is. Many Mm -hmm. people are in many, many different visions. Many different, you know, everybody's on their own journey. And each of us individually need to identify what that means. We can't really define it. I, I can't sit here and define for everybody what their best version of them would be. And I think part of the, the journey for each of us is to experiment in life and identify and to continue to grow and, and continue to seek what this best version is. You, you mentioned for yourself you've drastically changed what your best version is. And and I think that's something that we should all focus on constantly improving. And it's something that we never achieve the nirvana. We're we're never going to be at our perfect version, and it's something that's a continuing process. Right, right. I like that. So true. Because it's true. I mean, what I thought really worked well for me in my 20s, I can't say will be the same. I mean, yes, I would love to have the same 
figure I had, but that's just not going to work for me anymore. But maybe the best version is someone who always maintains this continued interest to learn and to grow and to keep maintaining beauty and happiness in their lives. I want to jump right into your book, The Commandments. I like that, The Ten Commandments. Could you tell us a little bit more about what that means? I mean, is that in the Bible or is it something more? I know that you've written a lot of experiences about what you've been doing and you've got now The Ten Commandments of Self-Improvement. Educate me a little bit. Absolutely. I'll take you back. So my challenge over the years, I'll go back to the Dale Carnegie times, and then I was reading Tony Robbins, and then I had friends who were into Transcendental Meditation, and you know, really a wide range and Landmark Forum and all these different programs that I experienced. And if you look at our website, selfgrowth.com, we have literally 300,000 different articles on self-improvement on our website, and there are millions of books that have been published on different topics. So I wanted to really look at these and said, well, are there some certain patterns that are coming up? Are there things that I'm seeing in multiple books, that, you know, on multiple articles or multiple books? And I started identifying. I said, well, what are these common themes? What's coming up time and time again when you look at the, the quote-unquote gurus out there or if you look at what's working for people? And based on that, we're able to identify 10 laws or 10 commandments or 10 ideas, whatever you want, however you want to describe them. I just thought the 10 commandments of self-improvement was catchy. And we came up with these kind of 10 laws or Ten Commandments that were almost ubiquitous. They were scattered throughout all the literature. They were scattered throughout all the articles. So we started talking about this, and I started talking about these Ten Commandments, and then I thought, let's spend some time talking about this. It's not currently a book, but there are Ten Ideas or Ten Commandments or Ten Laws that I think if people follow will help mm-hmm. them continue to grow and improve their lives. Beautiful. Can I hear some of them? Absolutely. The first one is an interesting one. It's almost a pre-commandment, and it's a very simple one. It's, there is no panacea. And what exactly is a panacea? It's, it's really, it's a cure-all. The word panacea means cure-all. And it's a belief that there's this panacea or this cure-all or solution for everybody, for everything. And the first commandment is there, there really isn't a single panacea. There's no one-size-fits-all. We're all different. And I'll give an example of it. A lot of people are out there talking about the the law of attraction. There was a very successful book called The Secret. And then a lot of people talk about hypnosis. And a lot of people are talking about neuro-linguistic programming or meditation. And my belief is that there's no single panacea that's going to work for everybody. You know, a low-carb diet isn't the answer for everybody who wants to lose weight. And what we need to do as individuals is identify the pieces of the puzzle, the things that work best in our lives. And you need to really find out and seek what's best for you. And, and that's kind of the first law, almost a starting point, which puts us all in the same mission or, or vision together to go out there and find what works for us. Wow, I like that. I like that very much. It's beautiful. Did these commandments come up because of an event that you were going through in your life, or was it in a meditation that you were doing? It's a combination what happened when I started this business and over the, the years is everybody kept coming to me and saying, We have this great book. Could you promote it? We have this great philosophy, these great teachings. And I was listening to countless people, and I was trying to figure out for myself, is there a perfect way? Is there an ideal way? Is there an ideal system? And I said, you know, it's it's important for me to share things that are working with people. You know, my goal was not only to improve my own life, but to help people improve their lives. And by virtue of that, I wanted to identify what are these top things that people are recommending. And I went from book to book to book, and we started cataloging all these and and identifying, all right, who's saying, for example, take responsibility? Who's taking saying take action? Who's talking about goal setting? And we identified 10 things, 10 pieces of the puzzle that many, many of the top experts are promoting. And that's where the idea came in. And and there is no panacea is really a starting point of that. And I can step you through, we can take a few minutes and, and quickly step through the other nine of the Ten Two. Commandments. And, and I think at, as people are seeing it, they're going to see things they recognize already. You know, mm-hmm. A lot of them are, are very practical, common sense, and things that we've already learned. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Let me hear a few more. All right. So a couple of them I just mentioned. So the, the number two is take responsibility. And this is something we all learn from when we're children. It's important for us to take responsibility for our lives. You know, take responsibility for cleaning up your room when you're a kid and and for creating your life when you're older. But for me, taking responsibility is a little bit different. A a lot of people look at take responsibility and they say, well, if I'm completely responsible, they they get into this blame mode. 
They're blaming themselves, they're blaming others. And, and I differentiate responsibility from blame. For me, responsibility is a more complicated thing because if you take a look at where we are right now in our lives, uh, we're brought here from a combination of things. You know, part of it is our genetics and how we're brought up. Part of it is the environment that we were brought up in, the teachings and the, our family and our parents and our friends. And part of it is this free will component. So in terms of where you are today, there are many, many factors that brought us to where we are today that brought you to where you are in the show and your business and what you do for a living for what I do and our friends. But for me, taking responsibility is about deciding that your future is your responsibility, owning and identifying where you want to take it. So number one was no panacea, and number two is really take responsibility for your life. I agree with that one big time because I think – we struggle with that because we need a lot of inner courage, don't you think, to sometimes face the responsibilities that we have created ourselves. We might say it was somebody else's creation, but it takes a lot of courage to really look at yourself, and it's not always very easy to do. Oh, it's a challenge, especially you know, there are times in life where you're going to get knocked down, and, right. and this is for everybody. You're going to get knocked down, and it takes courage to get up. It sure does. You know, you've covered such a tremendous amount of information around the book and all the commandments. You talk a little bit about something called, you have a product called Power Summaries. I want to know a little bit more about what are the Power Summaries and are they accessible to everyone? Absolutely. Let me step you through what that's about. So as part of this journey in terms of identifying kind of goals and what people should do, one of the things that became clear is that we have an opportunity to learn from virtually everything in our lives. My belief is that wherever we go, we have an opportunity. Everybody we speak with, we have an opportunity to learn what to do, how to change our lives, and how to improve our lives. And all of our experiences also provide us an opportunity to change and to grow. So what I wanted to put together is identify for people what's a great way to learn from the, really the widest range of people. So what we had done is identified the top roughly 364 best-selling books ever written on self-improvement, personal growth, and advice. So books by people like Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer and Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy, and the list goes on and on, Byron Katie, Martha Beck. We've identified literally the best people that we felt to learn from. And a lot of it was based on who's out there, who's making the most impact. And we realize it takes a lifetime to read hundreds and hundreds of books and and learn all these pieces of the puzzle. So what we did, what my team did is we went through all the books and we wrote a five to six page summary on each of these self-improvement books. And we're making this available to people in two ways. One, they can get full access to the library and it's powersummaries.com. It's all one word, powersummaries.com. And in addition to getting full access to the library, once a week, we send you out a power summary from a book that we think will help you improve your life, whether it's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey or Deepak Chopra book. So every week, we send you another book summary that takes maybe five to ten minutes to go through. And the, the goal is that every week, you take a few minutes aside and learn a few nuggets, a couple of pieces of the puzzle that can help you improve your life. Nice, nice. Very practical and seems very easy. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing, and thank you for bringing what I feel is very, very needed at this time. And before I end our conversation, I'd love to find out what's, what for you is your best vision for yourself, that, that best vision for yourself that you know would make the world a better place. It goes back to some of the ideas that I've been talking about. So one of the things I mentioned earlier, there's no panacea and for improving our lives. And I don't think there's a panacea for how to live your life. And as everybody knows, there are multiple religions out there. There's multiple economic systems out there. There's multiple sexual orientations out there. And I believe it's important for everybody, and including myself, and I start with myself, and, and for everybody to understand that we need to have a kind of a mutual respect and acceptance for other people's paths. And with that mm. requires empathy. So I think if we focus, if I focus myself and I think of people, uh, we all focus more on mutual respect, acceptance, and empathy, it will continue to create a greater world. Beautiful. Love that. Website that you could leave us with if our listeners would like to get a hold of you? Well, the two main ones, selfgrowth.com and powersummaries.com. Beautiful. Thank you so very much, uh, David, for the work that you're doing and all the very best. 
You're welcome. Thanks for having me on today. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. So we can do this. We can actually make ourselves much better. Definitely we have to put some work into it. But, I mean, David has collected so much information and so much data. All we have to do is go to that one step. And so when we can have this variety of options to choose from, it, it gives us a chance to feel more comfortable change in our transformation, but also with our improvement. I hope you've enjoyed my conversation with David Ritlin. And, of course, you can go to selfgrowth.com or selfgrowthmarketing.com or powersummaries.com. All right, you've been listening to America Meditating Radio. We want to thank you for joining us. Your presence is always so important. And again, a big shout out to our friends for Super Soul Sunday, 100 luminaries and 100 amazing individuals who are doing so much good in the world. Guys, keep it up. Don't stop. No matter what you go through, just keep going and know that you are being called to be an instrument to shine like a thousand suns because we need every one of us to bring this darkness out of our planet. So a big kudos to our friends who have just won the 100 Super Soul Sunday Amazing Individuals for Oprah Winfrey's program. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission, and we are here to love each other the same, so let's do that. I'm going to end it from our friend Gary Wright, Dreamweaver. Remember that good oldie? (laughs) Take care, everyone. All the very best. Trying to take away my